another successful urbex Navy hospital. They say that there is a spirit of a little slave girl that wanders these grounds. <laughs> yeah, that's my trash girl. <laughs> okay guys whenever we parked the car i was looking down on the ground and i was like is that deer poop no oh there's a flashlight no it is not it is berries look at this I don't know what kind of berries these are, but I want to eat this one. And they're like pretty good. So um, I'm going to look into what kind of berries these are. <laughs> and look, they turn my fingers. So we're eating berries off this tree. We're not sure what it is. Hey, horsey. Snob. Slightly north of Broad. Snob. Rainbow Row. Very beautiful. To the Confederate defenders of Charleston. Fort Sumter, which is way out that way, guys. What's going on, everyone? Charlie checking in. I don't know if we've done an intro or not. <laughs> we'll miss Rebecca here. Downtown uh, Charleston, South Carolina, right here, White Point Gardens, guys. We really, we really wanted to come out here and check out the battery, talk with you guys, and show you some haunted history down here in Charleston, guys. And we wanted to start it right here, White Point Gardens, guys, where they would hold their public executions. A lot of people that they uh, executed publicly out here, pirates. Pirates. Yeah, so we wanted to just maybe perhaps show you the exchange building back behind us. Um, where they used to keep the pirates uh, captive, hungry, crazy. They said that they said that even you can still hear the pirates moaning from from their hunger pains. You know, until they got brought right down here. There was rumors that they got you know hung in the trees and stuff. But um, you know, honestly, uh, I've seen pictures where they would actually just bring the gallows right here on the horse, or on the backs of horse buggies, and just one by one, they just drop them, you know, straight to their deaths right here in this curve. Trying to get themselves some dinner. <laughs> here we are, guys, down here on the battery, right in front of White Point Gardens, guys. Oh, Punch Buggy Red. <laughs> Punch Buggy, H1Z1 Red. And yeah, here we are at the site, guys. If you look way out there, you'll see Castle Pinckney, and right past it, Fort Moultrie, guys, was the um, first shots of the Civil War. They said estimated between 600 and 1 million lives were taken were lost uh, during this war and um, first shots right here and you, they said people were sitting on top of their on top of their houses just watching the cannon shots going on they say that at nighttime if you listen you can hear cannon shots and people screaming and sometimes even people running on fire into the water from from castle pinckney out there right here yep and right there you guys look right where that truck is going boom is where the gentleman pirate steed bonnet hung for his crimes on the open seas guys back in a time when uh, uh the open the open seas were lawless they were like uh um, pretty much like um the cowboys the wild west you know these these waters were um uh were home to many 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 pirates and pillagers and <laughs> man they just went up and down this coast right here just pillaging and plundering and um they would they would get captured and caught and sent way over there to the exchange building where there they would sit you know, until they were pretty much almost dead, then they would roll in the gallows on horseback right here. Contrary to popular people say that you can see it hanging in the trees. 
contrary to popular belief, they would roll the gallows in. Everybody would come watch them hang, and then they'd go back to doing their thing. Right here is where Bonnie Steve in the play. And it's actually funny, man, because he was actually on like Assassin's Creed. Oh, yeah. Charleston was actually on the Assassin's Creed video game, guys. Yeah. You, uh, oh, look, another bird. <laughs> they are hunting today. Can you just imagine Blackbeard out there? Yeah. Blackbeard was right out there. He had kidnapped a doctor and held him hostage until they got their medicines for the venereal diseases and other. They all had syphilis. <laughs> the syphilogonolitis, just like those monkeys that are out here. Oh my gosh, there's a monkey island where they all have herpes. Like, <laughs> they had a problem with herpes monkeys, and so they confined them all to an island. We and are not even joking, guys. We'll have to, to share that with you guys later, but. Yeah, that's for another vlog, man. But for today, we're here to share with you guys pirates and other sorts of caves and stuff out here in Charleston, South Carolina. So this is White Point Garden. Like I say, many, many, many pirates were hung and um, and just dumped right over here. So we just dumped them straight <laughs> into the marsh and just let the water take them, let the crabs eat them. And uh, that was their punishment. That, that's what, uh, that was Charleston's way of saying, hey, we do not deal with pirates here. So I'll show you guys that and show you See these cadence facing the water? Wow. <laughs> they were live at one point. Punch Monkey Black. Oh. Or H1. Let's go. Black for Hurricane Hugo. USS Pringle. That sounds delicious. Pringle. Near the spot in the autumn of 1718, Steed Bonnet, notorious gentleman pirate, 29 of his men, captured by Colonel William Rhett, met their just desserts after a trial and charge by famous in American history by Chief Justice Nicholas Trott. <laughs> Buried in the marshes, <laughs> beyond the little watermark, guys. If you saw right. Right, right in that water right there, there are skeletons of pirates. Wow. Wow. Charleston does not do pirates. Look how beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Very pretty. I had a friend at work, she was like, oh, you going to Charleston? Oh, did you watch that show Southern Charm? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I actually, guys, I used to um, uh, make paint for... Uh, uh, Thomas Ravenel. I don't know if you know who that one is, but he was the son. Ah, green. Oh. <laughs> he was the son of Arthur Ravenel, and he's a jerk. And you can tell him I said that too. All right, guys. As a youngin, I'm excited. I remember a, a vlog of Grandpa sitting on that bench right over there, telling a story about that gazebo, uh -huh. about how whenever he was a little boy and he saw somebody up there dancing that wasn't really up there dancing. It was a spooky story. Ooh, really? So. Yes, I'm excited. To right over here. Yes. That's mm -hmm. where Grandpa was. Let's go hang out. Yeah, this gazebo is very popular, guys. You know, when people get married, when they graduate and stuff, they come hang out at the gazebo. See, got our friend wearing a nice, beautiful dress right there. And, yeah, that's where to come celebrate. In beauty. Talk about history, a blast from the past, guys. We have a payphone. I wonder if Steve Bonnet and if they let Steve Bonnet make his last he phone made call. made his last call right from that phone. <laughs> right there, yeah. Great. Found the bench? Yes, I do believe this is where Grandpa was sitting when oh, he was telling his story, y'all. Really? Yes. Oh, love you, Daddy. Yeah, we see you were hoping you weren't sitting on that day. What was the story? Um, it was
was a little boy that he saw dancing, and then he was like, Daddy, can I go dance with that boy? And they were like, what boy? There ain't no little boy over there dancing. He's dancing on the gazebo right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> you tell your stories, we remember you, Dad. Never forget you. We love you. Such a beautiful stroll. Huge and, cannons. Yeah, Chum, seriously, I was gonna say, check out these cannons, baby. Can't you just imagine them just exploding in the night? Kaboom! Bright white hype, hot light and flashes and cannon, exp cannon explosion right here, guys. They were just loading them up. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Shoot them out. Order. Yes, ma'am. This was no joke, guys. Right here. It went down once upon a time ago. And we are lucky and blessed to be here to enjoy this. And this mortar and its three mates were first used by federal troops for the bombardment of Fort Sumter in October 1863. They may, well, they may well form the world's largest collection of this type of weapon. Wow. wow. Super cool, guys. Remember your history. Freedom and free. Big boss. Big boss. Big boss. Alright, rocket till the wheels fell off. How much huh? will they pay me? Oh god. So yeah guys, can you just imagine, man, rumor has it that uh, you know Fort Sumter, you know, was held down by by a federal stronghold and that uh, uh, there was a fleet of Confederates that were just you know just shipped right off the right off the uh, off the, off the coast of uh, Fort Moultrie or whatever, and uh, they're looking at Fort Moultrie, and they're like, you know what? F these guys. This is this is all this is all this is Confederate land right here. And they were said they were drunk and just went ahead and draw uh, uh, launched a cannonball at Fort Sumter, and thus began some more. Yeah. All that hell. Wow. Call this place the Holy City because there's a church on almost every street corner. Wow, look, beautiful horse. I want to pet him. Oh. And right here, guys, is the old exchange building right here, guys, where, as you can see, right there, the dungeon, they used to keep all the pirates <laughs> um, until they decided just to go hang them right there at White Point Garden, we show you guys. And they say that um, they would just leave them starving to death, just chained, and just forgotten about them. And they say uh, people that still work in the exchange building say that they can still hear clanging on the on the pipes and oh, moans, man. the moans from the pirates, you know, that have just been forgotten, just hungry and starving to death. Right here, the old exchange building. Come look at this horse; it's so beautiful. The Provost Dungeon. Yeah, if you look down in the bars, you'll be able to see like they got mannequins and stuff dressed up like oh, pirates. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at the old cobblestone. You don't see cobblestone much anymore. Feed the wolf. Ow! Ow. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Hey, what's up, brother? Yeah, he's trying to inch his way on out here. I'm sitting here filming him. <laughs> Badass car. Yeah. Yeah. Ow! Oh, look, here's a pedicab guy coming. Get it. Get so, it. He's so petty. Oh, look at those legs. <laughs> oh damn! Y'all like that, huh? <laughs> Some stud. Yay, yeah, is. That's a petty gang right there. <laughs> this is one way, is Just ball. This is one. Ooh. This is it. I think this is it, guys. Hmm.
we have found the notorious uh, Duelers Alley, guys. I'm not sure if y'all are too familiar with the story, but uh, once upon a time uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, dueling was uh, not only legal, but it was considered uh, dishonorable if uh, you didn't kind of uh, protect your honor and good name. And this alley right here is where it would take place. <laughs> and there was a guy, they call him the Whistling Ghost, the Whistling Doctor. Apparently he was kind of like a, um, a softy, a sweetie, you know, and his name had been besmirched and he had to come here to defend himself. He shot wide of his friend, and it was his friend too, shot wide of his friend, and his friend actually did not shoot wide and pow, killed him. Yeah, so they say you walk through here at nighttime and you can hear every now and again the whistling of Dr. Joseph Briggs. Duel's Alley. Okay, we have a little plaque dedicated to Philadelphia Alley, renovated by Mr. Joseph P. Riley, 2005. And it's wild, you know how like, you know, there's some people taking pictures right there, you know. Oh, look how beautiful you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, and this place is just kind of dedicated to, you know, just, you know, peace, a peaceful, nice little walk for people in the middle of the city. And how it used to once, you know, uh, play host for gunfights and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, uh, to defend your own honor right here. And it's kind of real juxtaposed. It's so different, yeah. So, oh, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's Beautiful shot, that. baby. Wow. And I believe that is the St. Philip Church. You could actually hear him. America and that right there my friends is the end to Dueler's Alley and like I say it's really really interesting just how juxtaposed it is look how beautiful it is and back in the day if you were disrespected you had to come here and hey you got my phone right there hi guys we thought the phone was dead but we got another and I thought I was being slick you know I thought I was gonna try to be slick and film them and they were filming me <laughs> oh, we got a handsome guy coming through. Hey, buddy. Hi. He's not telling oh, anybody what happened. Okay. The... Oh, he is a happy boy. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> Have a great one. He reminds me of the Bush's baked beans dog. He's not Roll talking. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> <laughs> Look how beautiful, guys. Just. just... And you can kind of see right up here, guys, where it looks like maybe there's some storefront, something there, and uh, potentially fire or mold. And it said that this place was ravaged by fires back in the uh, early 1900s. Isn't that old cobblestone? Yeah, so you don't really, not, you're not going to see much cobblestone anywhere else in America. <laughs> yeah, so this is it. Made famous by one Joseph Briggs and Robert Isaacs. Joseph the gentleman didn't want to kill his friend took the bullet and still whistles his sad tune to this day right along this alley Duelers alley and dude it just brightened up yeah, it do you realize oh my god it was like a certain sense of gloom even though it was a calm a calming gloom just evaporated instantly as we walked out from under that copse of trees awesome Oh my goodness, that sucker Put your is... face in there. Oh, I just poked my eyeball out. <laughs> hey, there's the fruit you want. It is. Plenty of that fruit you want. That's the low hanging fruit, get you some. <laughs> the bird's like, screw it, yo, Lexus. <laughs> Come on, baby. Camera's rolling. Eat this. You eat it. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm about to die. I'm about to trip right in that. Woo! That was super good, baby. And what is this thing? A headless, armless angel. That is just too much. Creepsville. You got you some more fruit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. You're good. Be <laughs> one. I'm not freaking doing it. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to crap my pants over here on Cumberland Street. <laughs> This guys. Here we have the Unitarian Church in Charleston. Established 1772, guys, and I wanted to stop here. This is gonna be our last spot right here in Charleston for the night because this is presumed um, resting place of um, America's first female mass murderer, uh, Lavinia Fisher. Uh, we tried to show you guys some footage at the jail around the corner a minute ago, but they're doing tours and stuff tonight, so uh, we couldn't really walk around the uh, uh, the grounds and tell you the story, but how'd the story go? That uh, they asked her, uh, she asked everybody that was there for her public execution. Yeah, what? she's hanging up there with the rope on her neck, you know, fixing to be executed. And what did she tell them? <laughs> she, had, they, she asked if uh, they had any words for, for the devil because she was about to have lunch with them. And she jumped off the gallows. She didn't even wait for him to pull the, the crank. She just jumped off the gallows, uh, struggled to her last breath uh, right there on those grounds. Quarter mile away, they must have wheeled her body on a, a horse and buggy, plopped right on over here, and then dumped her in an unmarked grave somewhere right in there, guys. And she is not the only Okay, sorry about that, guys. We are running out of battery space. We've taken so much footage this weekend, man. But uh, anyway, yeah, so she is, uh, Lavinia Fisher is not the only famous person in here. Uh, I believe it was uh, Miss Annabelle Lee. Okay. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe uh, actually wrote a poem about a Miss Annabelle Lee um, that he actually um, had uh, um, romantic relations with right here in Charleston, South Carolina. He was in the military. Right he here was in this cemetery. Right here in this cemetery. He was based right here uh, off the coast right here. And uh, he met a pretty wealthy woman uh, here while he would come in uh, in the town and stuff. And they would, uh, you know, meet right here in this cemetery. Well, her father, like I say, she was very wealthy. Her father caught wind of the of the romance and he did not appreciate it. He did not uh, uh, approve of it. And he pulled some strings and he had it where Poe wasn't allowed back on land anymore. <laughs> you know, so while uh, he was, uh, they stationed him somewhere else while he was gone, Miss Annabelle Lee, she, um, she passed away from consumption. She and um, her fa mother and father actually buried her as well in this very graveyard in an unmarked grave so that uh, Mr. Edgar Allan Poe uh, uh, would not be able to come and visit his fair love, Annabelle Lee. But he would come in and I'm sure he would just sit and just wonder. I wonder if he wrote the poem before or after. Hmm. Are you here, Lavinia? Yeah. 
so pretty. Rest in peace, ladies. <clears throat> All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. That ends it for today, oh, guys. We have the big bridge. The big we bridge. gotta get to the big bridge. <laughs> we have so much more that we gotta see here, guys. We haven't covered this weekend. Um, we would definitely be back, man. So much fun. Beautiful sunset. Harding shot in North Carolina. Somewhere over that way is Trail Wood. So Somewhere over that way, over that way, Mama sleeps. Somewhere over that way, Ghosts and Pirates. Yo ho, beggars and thieves. Forever say we die. She saved me there. I almost messed it up. <laughs> Never.